Prizemag.com. Okay, uh, we're here at Anime Next 2016 with the great Richard Epcar and the lovely Alan Stern. Um, for your first question, what actors inspired you guys to go into this business? I'll let you start. <clears throat> well, I was inspired as an actress uh, when I was very, very young. I saw Dame Judith Anderson do Medea. And, <clears throat> and she's been in acting it ever since. And um, so when I, was, when I was 12 years old, I would have fights with my mother and I would go into the bathroom with my with my the complete works of Shakespeare and Euripides dramas, tragedies, and I I was a mirror actress. I performed to myself before the mirror. <laughs> That's not weird at all, honey. And um, I graduated from there. I, I started performing for other people. <laughs> no, but uh, there, I, I started off uh, doing classical theater, and um, as a matter of fact, uh, the classical training lent itself. That that is how I was invited. I was doing a film. I'm getting ahead of myself. But uh, the cla I, I was doing a film, and um, somebody asked me if I would like to do voice work. That's how it began. Yeah. Can't be Shakespeare. No, it was a Western. Oh. <laughs> I was riding horses. <laughs> uh, for me, I, uh, I, well, I kind of knew I always wanted to be an actor, even as a kid. So. Uh, uh, when I was in kindergarten, I put on these little skits with my classmates and stuff like that and wrote these silly little things. In first grade, we did these things. So I kind of always knew this is something I wanted to do. And uh, Ellen kind of got me into the, the voice side of it. Kind of? Well, you did. You absolutely <laughs> did. Get, got me into it. She, because I, I originally went to L.A. to become the new Clint Eastwood, and I became the new Mel Blanc instead for some reason. So. Uh, which was fine. It actually worked out really well. I'm really happy it all worked out that way. But uh, uh, the people that inspired me was I was, I was a big fan of uh, Sean Connery and uh, Laurence Olivier and uh, Clint Eastwood and uh, Marlon Brando. Those were the people that I really liked. And uh, as far as the voice world is concerned, mm -hmm. I you know I, I like Peter Cullen. I you know I was liked him. Mel Blanc, of course, is the, the grandfather of all this all this stuff that we do. He kind of started this whole business really. Um, and you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of very super wonderful, talented people out there that we're fortunate enough to work with all the time and see and direct. And so uh, we've been we've been really fortunate in that we're always busy, always working, and you know, get to work with some really wonderful people. So yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Um, are there any like shows or fandoms that you guys are into right now? Uh, that we watch, you mean? Yeah. Um, you know the the problem. Uh, for us is that uh, we're so busy working all the time. We really don't have a lot of chance to watch stuff that we work on. You know, it's like I rarely, people always say, do you play the games you're in? It's like, no, I don't, because first of all, I'm a terrible gamer. I'm a much better actor than I'm a gamer. And, and we just don't have a time. I mean, we, I have watched a lot of the Ghost in the Shell because I, I do love the show and it's, it's kind of a great show. But uh, as far as the other shows are, I, I'll watch them once in a while if I can, but it's just, I, it's so hard for us to, to watch those shows. Yeah, it, it totally is. But <clears throat> when we do get to watch an entire show is when we get to direct it. Yeah, no. that's true. Um, <clears throat> we just did, co-directed Lupin the Third, the Blue Jacket oh, yeah. series. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> that's going to be coming out soon. And and that was great fun. That, so that's fun. Does it help like being a voice actor first and then directing? Mm -hmm. Oh yes. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because then you can you can totally support the actors mm -hmm. because you know what they need. Yeah. And you know how to feed them. Yeah, and I think the the important thing is when you're when you're doing the work, uh, 
on, <clears throat> on the mic side, you kind of know what you need from the director. And when you're directing, you, it's it's kind of nice because there are directors that are not actors, yeah. and and it's you know it's not. I, I think there's a uh, there's a communication that actors have with other actors that they can kind of mm -hmm. communicate what they need to, to bring it out of the uh, the actor while they're performing. So. I think it really helps a lot, you know, you, you, yeah. everything helps, you know, it's all, it all comes from mm -hmm. the same creative side, but I think that there's a, a level of communication between actors who direct and actors who, you know, perform, so. Well, turn off your phone. Okay. There's, well, yeah, I mean, like with anything, um, if you do, an, if you know anime, there's a language, and, and um, <coughs> Excuse me. And it makes you cough. I have, you think about it. I have such bad allergies, and what I shouldn't have done. I think you're allergic to me. Um, I think. That's and I did mean. last night was I enjoyed a piece of your pizza here. <laughs> best pizza and, ever. <clears throat> best pizza ever. Thanks to Dennis and, and Barbara who gave them a. And I'm a suffering nod over today. <laughs> Took us to the best pizza place in the world. It was great. But uh, anyhow, yeah, everything has language. And uh, so actors have a language in the way that they communicate. Uh, it's not just more, less. It's, um, it's a specific language that we relate to each other with so that we understand uh, the levels and the nuances to, to have a nuanced performance. And, and that is to give the biography of the character, to know how to direct a character, to know how to direct an actor so that they can have a nuanced performance mm -hmm. and that it's not flat. And also that's something else when I direct, because I am an actor, mm -hmm. I like to hire uh, actors, not not people who are only voice actors, yeah. but people who are actors outside of being voice actors, mm -hmm. because it gives them a special arc in, in understanding character growth. Mm, very nice. Um, do you guys have any dream roles? <clears throat> dream roles? Yeah. Well, I already played the Joker, and I would love to play Batman. Maybe I could do mm -hmm. Batman and the Joker in the same uh, project. That would be kind of fun. Mm -hmm. I would enjoy that. And I'd like to do a James Bond or anything to do with James Bond. Uh, that would be my dream role. But I have to say, I've done over 500 characters. So I've been pretty pretty blessed and pretty lucky, and I, I just keep going. So uh, every year it gets better and better. And, uh, you know, I, like I said, I'm lucky. And they, they throw some characters at me that I, I had no idea I was going to play. And uh, it's turned out really, really great. So what about you? My dream roles are to keep doing roles and to keep working. Yeah. Um, there's far less roles for women than there are for men. In any given project, you have a couple of roles for women as a rule, and all the rest are men, unfortunately. And um, so there needs to be more and more roles for women. It's very, very important. This is uh, something that I talk about a lot. Yeah. Um, so my dream is to keep doing roles. I have, I have a very big range, which you have to have if you want to be successful as a, a voice actress. Unless there, there's two ways you can succeed being a woman in this business. Mm -hmm. One is to have a very high-pitched voice where you do all the little girl roles, mm -hmm. or to be able to have a wide range. Mm -hmm. And I have a wide, wide range, so um, my dream roles are to keep on working. That's always good. Yeah. Uh, do you guys have any like specific techniques or like rituals for getting into character. You want to show them? No. <laughs> oh come on, honey. No, I really don't. Honey, no. please. No. Pretty now please. you're scaring me. Pretty please, the sugar on it. No, go away. You want to see it, don't you? <laughs> don't you? You want to see? 
Okay, this is, we're going to show you. Did you escape from the home or something? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Our home. <laughs> what are we doing? Our warm-up? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll be driving, going to an audition, and this is what we do. And uh, so and people look at us like we're insane, basically. So. Especially if the windows are rolled down. <laughs> who, can, who can blame them, quite frankly? <laughs> so, yes. So you know, yeah, these are I things that you do <laughs> to uh, to warm up the voice, to open up the chords, and. Um, yeah, we both both of us, whenever we work or audition, we always warm up our voices before because, uh, particularly if you're doing something that's locally mm -hmm. stressful, you want to make sure that you're that your chords and everything's warmed mm -hmm. up and that you're good to go because you can really hurt yourself. And, you know, I've been, you know, both of us have been doing this 30 some years and, you know, there's people that, you know, they just go in and they, they don't know, they really don't know voice placement or how to do certain things and they'll just blow out their pipes and, you know, you can really do some, some damage to yourself and yeah. you get nodes and that whole thing. So thank God so that has not happened know, to me with all the screaming no. I've done with Call of Duty and Spec Ops and all those games on our, thank God I'm not good, I haven't uh, ever had nodes or anything mm -hmm. like that. But. Yeah. When we started out, we did all these films from Taiwan. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, we used to call them Chopsaki <laughs> movies. Yeah, it's martial arts movies. And um, no kissing, no sex, but lots of limbs flying, yes. lots of beheading. Decapitations. Yeah, yeah. Yes. All of that. Vivisecting so, in slow motion, that was okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You couldn't show a breast or anything no, like that. That would be bad. No kissing. <laughs> so there was a lot of Torture female okay. screaming. And, um, yeah, yeah, we both cut our teeth on those kinds of movies. Yeah. That was so, years ago. So you, you have, to, so the most important thing, and that's, this is, pe people will say, what's the hardest thing in doing voice work? And it's the screaming. Yeah. And um, what you have to do is you have to know how to relax the voice and relax the throat so that you don't do damage and drink a lot of water. We're drinking uh, decaf coffee right now, which is a big... Are you? I am. Why are you drinking regular? Because it tastes better. But you know you're not supposed to. I know. That's this has been a coffee moment. <laughs> That's a conversation for later. <laughs> um, anyhow, uh, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> anyhow, but you're not. I mean, there's there's certain things that you don't do. You don't drink coffee, you know, because coffee and wine, red wine, will close up the, the hell throat. Drinks wine in the booth, unless you're in France. No, I, I'm just saying these yeah. are things that close up the throat. Yeah. Uh, lots of times they'll keep cut up apples in the booth because the apples cut out the smacking sounds, the, yeah, they'll make you the cotton mouth, and yeah. you know, you'll hear that okay, kind of sound. You, the idea. Um, you know, when people stop having yeah. moisture in the mouth. Um, Part of the problem is that the technology is so great now and the microphones are so amazing. It picks they, everything they can hear up. your blood running through your veins. I mean, it's yeah. just unbelievable, these mics. So you, you have to really be aware of every sound your mouth makes when you do these these rolls, you know, it's just really crazy, so any little smacking or whatever, you know, it's just like, you know, it'll pick it up. And so we'll say, if we hear smacking in the booth and we're directing, we'll say, drink some water. Yeah, take yeah. some water. Or um, vodka, if there's vodka. Um, has working and acting fulfilled any of your bucket list goals? My bucket list goals? Yeah. Yeah, I think it has. I think it's, uh, it's uh, you know, we're both, like I say, we're both very lucky. We get to do a lot of different characters and meet a lot of wonderful people, work with some great people. I've got to direct some amazing people. I've got to work with some amazing people that I've, that I've respected or <coughs> enjoyed over the years and have been, uh, it's been pretty cool to, to be able to work with these people, so yeah. yeah. It's, it's absolutely, uh, I have friends who work and uh, they don't constantly work. And for us, 
We're our work, work yeah. our work is pretty consistent. We're lucky. We're one of the lucky ones. So, if we're not working on camera, we're doing voice work, or we're directing. directing yeah. Yeah. And so it it keeps the movement moving. Yeah. We're always and doing then, something. the great plus side is that we've got to meet all of you. And um, we had no idea that any of this was even a thought. I mean, when we were doing Robotech, or even before when, because we started before Robotech, and, and we'd go, who's going to watch this? We had no well, apparently idea. Apparently a lot of people, so, yeah. <laughs> but um, then one day we were invited to a convention, and people were going nuts over the work. And and that and how many years ago was that? That was a long time ago. That was uh, about twenty years ago, I think, was our first convention mm -hmm. that we went to. It was a Robotech convention. It was yeah. ten years after Robotech. And uh, I, we worked so much that I kind of forgot at the time that I was even part of that show. Mm -hmm. So I said to the guy, "Was I in that show?" He goes, "Yeah, yeah. You mm -hmm. did. You did four of the lead characters." And I said, "I did." He said, "Yeah." So I said, "Can you send me some of the stuff?" So he sent it to me. I said, "Oh yeah, that show." And then when we went there, people went bazebas, you know. Mm -hmm. It was like, wow, this is crazy. So, it's been nice. You know, it's really nice that, that people really appreciate the work that we do. Because we're in these dark booths all day, you know, cranking out this stuff. And, you know, you never know if some of them, are they going to like it, are they not going to like it. And, uh, and when you go to the conventions and people get really excited, like I just did this new one, uh, JoJo's uh, Bizarre Adventure. And I play uh, old, old Joseph in that, and and I had no idea it was as popular as it, as it was. And people just go bazebas over, it. and it's really fun. You know, it's really exciting to, to meet with people that really appreciate what you're doing and the work you're doing. And you know, it's fun. It's really a fun thing. So we enjoy that. That's part of the reason we continue to do the conventions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you guys go to so many of them. Do you have any like fan like mm -hmm. most popular fan requests that you all guys always get? Um. I don't know. There's, there's always. You mean in so far as roles? Yeah. Um, well, we have our popular characters. Like, uh, for me, it's Bleach, Masaki Kurosaki, and uh, Gundam Unicorn, uh, uh, Martha Viss Carbine, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, I, I always have to have my list in front of me, otherwise I don't remember. Use Mom. <coughs> oh yeah, Use Mom and No In. And Mars Mom. And, and Mars Mom. No, not Mars no. Mom. Mar was the name of the series. Mars of Pan. Mars of Pan, no. <laughs> uh, Jack's Mom and Mar. Um, yeah, there's a and mom in there somewhere. I've, I've done a lot of mothers. Yeah. And, and You're then, one mother. And, uh, and, and I do a lot of villains also, you know, so, I, I mean, you find, it's, it's wonderful, you know, to, it's wonderful to meet the fans, and, and then what's really wonderful is to find fans who find the old stuff that you haven't thought about in years. Yeah. For instance, um, we've... I've got one fan. We've got one fan who uh, we remembers. Got one fan. That's fantastic. Yeah, who remembers? The, it's one of the early shows that I that we did. Um, what was it? Uh, um, I have no ben, idea what you're talking about. Ben. Uh, oh, it? oh, you're talking about it was a Captain Schnauzer. Is that what yeah. About? We, or, did or, uh, we did we did this Robinson both of them. One, yeah. We did this uh, this series this film that Richard directed. It was almost like thirty years ago. Called, was, this called, guy loves this thing. He it's over, it over thirty over years again. ago. Called the Adventures of Captain Schnauzer, and um, yeah, it was great. It was a great movie. And I played this this frog character, Wanda, and um, anyhow. He talks about it nonstop and remembers it and remembers all these old. It's kind of scary. I, I, I mean, it's <laughs> wonderful. You know? No, it's great. He really he loves it. He just goes on and on about it. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's fun. Listen, you, you know, you have you have no idea how much you affect people with this stuff and how how this stuff reaches people and how you know 
positively they're influenced by the stuff. So it's it's really kind of nice, and that's a good feeling too when you do something like this and people really, you know, uh, connect with it on a certain level. You know, so that's kind of nice. Like a lot of these talk about like being in the booth, and you don't get that automatic. Yes. You know, reaction right. as if you were on stage. Exactly. Right. Yeah, that's exactly right. So when you go to the conventions and they appreciate your work, it's really kind of nice to hear about it and have them appreciate what you're doing. Well, I can imagine. Yeah. I, but then, but then I, I kind of feel like Sally Fields, you like me, you really <laughs> like me. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely people do. <laughs> um, what part of your careers are you most proud of? Hmm. <clears throat> well, That's so hard. For me, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really, really proud to be part of the, uh, the DC Universe and uh, the Batman world. Uh, I co-directed Arkham Origins and played three characters in that. I'm Commissioner Gordon in Batman Unlimited, uh, which is a series of, of uh, films, uh, Batman films. And of course the Joker, I've played the Joker four times now and I'm going to be playing him again in another game soon. I can't talk about that, but it's just to be part of that universe is really, really exciting for me. And then to be part of the Mortal Kombat universe and do uh, Raiden. I mean, Raiden is such a uh, an incredible character, a very noble, uh, honorable character, and I really enjoy doing him as well. So, uh, I mean, there's a, you know there's a lot of characters that you do, but it's uh, it, for me it's really kind of fun to be doing these iconic characters that that kind of everybody knows. You know, sometimes you'll they'll say, oh, I've done certain anime shows or something, you know, somebody says, oh, what do you do? You're a voice actor, and you, what have you done? And you tell them some of the shows, and they kind of look at you like, what? Because they're not, you know, they're not plugged into that stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you say the Joker, everybody knows the Joker, and, and most people know who Raiden is. So it's, you know, those are kind of iconic characters, and it's kind of nice to have those in your pocket, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. And you, little girl? What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Uh, what part of your career are you most proud of? Um, you know, every single job I do affects me in a wonderful way. I'll tell um, you what's what you're most proud of. <clears throat> she directed the uh, Star Wars into the Navajo language. Wow. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Aren't you? Is that the one, one thing you're the most proud of? You know, it's one of the things I am most proud of it because, because um, it wasn't simply a role. Mm -hmm. I was affecting a change with the Native American Indians. Mm -hmm. uh, I was part of a change because what they're trying to do is evolve the language that is dying. It's an endangered language. Um, I mean, it's it's uh, it's for, it's being forgotten, and so the reason that Star Wars was done was to have a connection between the elders and the youth, and inspire the youth to learn the language because they haven't, mm -hmm. and the language was killed back in uh, when when the Indian school. There, there were no in the eight, in the eighteen in the eighteen hundreds. The U.S. government took all the children out of their homes <clears throat> and put them into regular schools. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and the children were forbidden from seeing their parents for years, like four or five years. And they were also forbidden from speaking their language or speaking about their language. I mean, they wanted to destroy the culture. I, I mean, it's not, not one of our prouder it, just horrible, horrible. And this continued up through the 1960s. And so, to have be a part of something that was was historically changing. This was the first time any American, Native American language was heard in a film. When we went to see the preview in Window Rock, Arizona, which is the capital of the Navajo the Nation, people were sobbing. 
yeah. and crying to hear their own language. When you see the scroll at the beginning for Star Wars, <coughs> it's all in Navajo. It's all in Navajo, <coughs> yeah. and uh, cool. you can get it on Amazon. Wow. Uh, this uh, this thing. So anyhow, I, I could talk about this. For hours, if you let her. Yeah, no, but. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I was just saying that's what probably one of your. Yeah, it, it is because yeah. it 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 was more than just me. It yeah, was more part. than just a, a, an acting role or directing mm -hmm. role. It was something that really affected yeah, people. That's incredible. Yeah, it was it was historical, and I was very very proud and honored to be a part of it. Yeah. And that's actually a great place to end our interview. What? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys have a place to go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Very nice to meet you. So yeah. nice to meet you. Yeah. We rise mag.com.